Homebind. Yeah. Um, you know, Homebind's a little a little different, right? Mm -hmm. You can pretty much afford something that maybe you can't ultimately afford. So Or you can buy something. You can you could buy it. Right. Mm -hmm. But the bank will say you can afford it based on your debt to income ratios, based on your, your credit or based on a combination with you know your wife or if you have a spouse or whatever cosign. Um, and so I feel like affordability should only be around what do you say? The twenty five to thirty five percent if you want to talk about affording? Um I think it should be no more than twenty five percent of your take home monthly take home pay. Right. And so that's after taxes. After taxes after, taxes. after everything. Right. Because again, you want your home to be a blessing, not a curse. And if it's only twenty five percent of what you pay, I think you'll be pretty comfortable. I definitely agree with that. Now, I don't want to get into too much, but wouldn't you say if you were married, right? right? And you had two individuals and they used their total income to buy a home. Would you say that there was a, a flaw in that? Um, I won't say there's a flaw, but there has to be a level of dedication, right? Because if you're married, not always, but likely you may have children mm -hmm. and there will have to be a dedication on both parties to try to maintain that level of income throughout any life events. Okay. Because if you drop to half of that income and you overstretched yourself with a house that, you know, depending on who's making what, um, that 25% take home could go up to 50% take home if somebody stops working. Exactly. And this is actually very common. Exactly. So I would advise, you know, people who are married to have 25% of each person's take home as affordability. That's tough. It's tough, but say for instance, if I lose my job or my wife loses her job, like you said, that could go up to 50%. So if I have 25%, she has 25%, anyone could take over that mortgage payment at any time. I think I'm gonna push back a little bit on that. Okay. And, and this is why, right? Because a lot of times, or sometimes, I won't say a lot of times, mm -hmm. um, people get married to be a financial help to each other. Yeah. So, you know, somebody gets married to somebody else. They individually both can't afford a home, but they get together with their dual incomes. They can afford a home. And that is actually a way a lot of Americans can get into homes. So I don't want to shut the door on that option. You see what I'm saying? Sure. If um, me and my wife make... I don't know, I'm just throwing something out there, $12 an hour, mm -hmm. individually in Houston, it will be hard for us to afford a home in a moderately safe, safe area. But together, our incomes, we can definitely get a home in a moderately safe area. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. But if she were to, or you were to, lose that $12 an hour, it's going to be trouble. It's going to be very hard. And so if you had the 25% yourself and she had the 25% herself, there's never going to be a problem. I, no, I'm saying I understand yeah. that, but I'm, I'm thinking about it from a more right. human aspect. Like, I want people to own homes. I think it's important. Right. In a way, it's a good wealth building tool, tool right? Because that's for savings. It's a way to pass on wealth to the next generations. I think personally, at some point, not today, but at some point, everybody should own a home. And I know that not everybody's going to reach certain levels of income. So right. I, I, I have to support the idea of two people getting together in a union of marriage and achieving that goal of owning a home. Of course, I don't want the home to be a curse. Right. So I'm still going to say, hey, combined income, 25%. Okay. that's right. And then work towards beating that percentage over time while you're in that house. So it's 25% of both your incomes now, but you try to move up and pay, move up and job, maybe get educated, gain more skills over time, and that 25% turns to 15% of your, you guys' take home, pay because, take home pay because you've had some kind of um, economic mobility over time. Because the hope is that everybody makes more money over time. So that's how I'm looking at it that way. Mm -hmm. So, right, worst case, if they both make $12 an hour, it's 25%. If it's 50%, for a short period of time, that's not the end of the world. 
as long as you don't have these other debts killing you, like car payments and all of that. And I'm going to definitely tell you, if you own a home and it's 25% of your combined take-home pay, there should not be one car loan in that house. <laughs> okay, I got it. I don't disagree with that, yeah. but that's a different topic. Right. Okay, so affordability. Just because the bank says that you can afford a $300,000 house does not mean that you should go out there and purchase a $300,000 house. I say, you know, like I said, maybe shoot for a 225, right? If, if anything, try to keep it between 25%, 20 to 35% of each individual. Yeah.